Hello everyone, I am Vipin Dhote from Faculty of Pharmacy, VNS Group of Institution, Bhopal. Today we will be discussing about the cardiac impulse and its correlation with ECG. In clinical practices, we record the overall movement of our heart in the form of ECG. So this electrical activity is measured for heart as a unit and not for, for a particular single cell ionic exchange. So what this ECG records? ECG records the body surface potential induced by electrical activity of any cardiac cell. So in uh, general practices, how this ECG looks and what information we get from this ECG. Now, if you look at our ECG, it is in the form of a wave, a complex and again a wave. So it is always P, Q, R, S and T. Now how can we read this ECG pattern? Now if you look at this, it is P wave. This P wave corresponds with the atrial depolarization that is the contraction of atria now as we said this impulse will be passing from atria to ventricles obviously through av node we need to understand that this qrs complex available out here indicates the ventricular activity especially the depolarization of our ventricle now we have this t wave which conveys us the repolarization of our ventricle that is the relaxation of our ventricle now the other markers available with us are pr segment which spans from depolarization of your atria to depolarization of the ventricle the next interval which we talk about is qt interval this qt interval is spanning or it covers the period of your ventricular depolarization to its repolarization that is ventricular contraction to relaxation and it is one of the important marker for this arrhythmic situations now the last segment which we have is ST segment and this ST segment covers the period of ventricular depolarization for this particular period your ventricle was contracted it was uh, 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 conveying us the information about any change in your ventricular activity so in myocardial ischemia we generally find that there is elevation of this st segment which is a uh, characteristic of infarction so if you need to understand it it all occurs in a rhythmic fashion now when it occurs in a rhythmic fashion, we generally call it as cardiac rhythm. But this cardiac rhythm involves systolic as well as diastolic activity. And to understand it in detail, we need to know that this cardiac rhythm is characterized by electrical impulse which arises into SA node and transfers or gets conducted to ventricular cell. Obviously, when the pacemaker cell or SA node cell generates the impulse it will be conducted to AV node from AV node to bundle of His bundle of His from bundle of His it is going to get communicated or uh, conducted to purpunje fibers and from purpunje fibers to all ventricular myocytes now this is the pattern of our impulse conduction. Now all this activity that is electrical activity is regulated by the voltage sensitive channels which are selective for our electrolytes. The important electrolytes are sodium, potassium and calcium. In our last video of action potential we have seen the important events and the exchange mechanism of all these ions in our body. Now if you look at the cardiac muscle the myocyte we have specialized cells especially SA nodal cells are generally considered to be pacemaker cells because they can depolarize spontaneously in 
physiological condition but the spontaneous activity is not present with these ventricular cells and that's why this conduction mechanism is very very important but when we consider heart as a unit we have to look at every cell as the part of this pumping mechanism and the most important function of our heart seems to be the pumping of blood to all our organs for its regular activity now when we consider heart as an organ we will be considering ventricular myocytes as the idealized cardiac cell and when we are looking at the ventricular myocytes we need to know what is its resting potential resting potential means where the pacemaker activity is generated so we will be looking at the resting potential of our ventricular myocyte which is minus 85 millivolts it is really negative it is uh, um, uh, the potential difference between uh, the ions which is creating this negative potential for our cell now when it peaks gets depolarized it will be always reaching to plus 45 millivolt it is the maximum potential of our ventricular cell now you look at the difference there is large difference between the resting potential and the peak depolarization potential of our ventricular cell and it obviously takes a lot of time so the cardiac impulse is pretty long it is almost 0.4 seconds it work it is pretty different from the uh, neuronal cell and the skeletal muscle cell which we have seen in earlier video so the precise duration of our cardiac impulse seems to be around 0.4 seconds which involves the systolic activity and diastolic but then when we talk about the systolic and diastolic activity in the form of cardiac impulse we need to distribute it in a phase wise manner to understand it better so to start with we will be looking at the potential change which is occurring into our myocyte so as we said our resting potential is minus 85 somewhere around minus 90 millivolt so if we plot it it is minus 60 minus 30 0 plus 30 and it is plus 60 somewhere out here we will be finding our peak potential of the myocyte now it is always in the form of millivolts but then we said that it spans for around 0.4 second so if we consider this as 0 second this could be 0.1 this could be 0 0.2 0 0.3 and 0.4 the unit must be seconds if you look at the overall mechanism of our uh, electrical impulse we need to start with the resting potential and it is called as phase 4 so resting potential we said that the resting potential of our ventricular myocyte is minus 85 millivolt how it is achieved sometimes it is also called as pacemaker potential this pacemaker potential or resting potential is always the gradual depolarization of the cell during diastole it occurs because the calcium ion currents gets activated and the potassium ion currents gets deactivated this combination of uh, uh, activities ensures that there is change in voltage which is actually observed into this particular cell so when we say that the calcium ion currents are getting activated and potassium ion currents are getting deactivated we are looking at the gradual depolarization now gradual depolarization that is the uh, the resting potential which is moving through the channels of calcium and potassium ions additionally this negative potential of the cell also opens up one specific channel which is selective for in earlier uh, cells especially neuronal cells we have seen that the potential is generated by sodium ions but in cardiac cells the onus is on 
calcium currents which generates this pacemaker potential so if you look at this in the other form we will be looking at the movement of calcium and potassium ions which uh, sets the stage for action potential that is depolarization now the next phase is phase zero which we call it as rapid depolarization now when we have said this rapid depolarization it is the action potential upstroke which is activated by transient sodium ion currents now it is sodium ion currents which will be peaking at this plus 45 millivolts it is actually because sodium ion channels are opening up which allows the sodium ion to enter into cell and this will activate only when a cell reaches to critical firing threshold that is minus 60 millivolt we can call it as threshold potential of cardiac cell so until and unless the, the voltage reaches to minus 60 sodium ion channels are not going to get opened once it reaches to the peak it gets inactivated and commences the next stage we can put it as phase zero out here and the next phase which we are looking at is phase one it is called partial repolarization we called it as partial repolarization it is one here we will definitely find that the ions involved into this particular stage are potassium ions the potassium ion currents here the potassium ion currents are inwardly that is potassium is moving inside the cell and this stage is the result of two important events the first one is inactivation of sodium ion channels and activation of inwardly potassium ion currents this is one of the important stage which we are going to observe into this cardiac impulse the next phase is unique to cardiac electrophysiology and we call it as phase two or plateau phase now this plateau phase is actually the unique phase to cardiac myocyte here the inward calcium ion currents along with the outward potassium currents maintains this balance this fine-tuned balance is maintained by few hundred calcium ion channels and potassium ion channels now this calcium ion channels which we are talking about are unique to the cardiac myocytes these are L type calcium ion channels which gets activated when cell reaches the potential of minus 30 millivolt and these L type channels are responsible for contractile mechanism of cardiac myocytes once this balance is achieved we will consider this as a plateau phase and when the plateau phase ends we expect phase 3 that is repolarization this repolarization is regulated by activation of delayed outwardly rectifying potassium ion channels now this potassium ion channels gets activated and the potassium ion move outside the cell at this potential change will bring back the overall um, uh, voltage of your cell back to normal that is to resting potential here your cell is getting ready to again exchange calcium ions and potassium ions here it is again slow activation of calcium influx and declining of potassium currents in uh, potassium currents in the myocytes now this particular period conveys us that now cell is getting ready to receive next impulse for again the systole and diastole if you look at this overall duration of our electrical impulse we find that 
and the potassium ion channels gets uh, gets activated in repolarized phase so this whole duration is called as refractory period is called as refractory period during this period your uh, our heart has sufficient time to eject all the blood which is present into our various chambers which is very important for perfusion of organs during this period your heart will not receive any other impulse if it receives then it will be the indication of change in rhythm now having seen the overall cardiac impulse we need to correlate it with ecg to understand how exactly this ecg is conveying us the information about this cardiac impulse now as we have said p wave p wave was associated with the depolarization of atria any change in the sa nodal activity can be seen by change in the pattern of p wave so p wave is indicator of atrial activity now qrs complex which represents the ventricular depolarization and repolarization any alteration into this uh, ventricular activity can be seen from the pattern of qrs complex if you look at the t wave which was responsible for the uh, which was uh, indicating the activity of ventricle especially the repolarization or relaxation can be observed by changes in this t wave qt interval which was conveying us the information about the overall ventricular activity especially repolarization and depolarization any prolongation into this qt interval is the indicator of change in cardiac rhythm and is responsible for conveying us whether the patient is experiencing dysarrhythmia or not st segment which was associated with the plateau phase this plateau phase is conveying us the overall activity of ventricle especially in the contractile mechanism especially when it is contracted and any elevation of this st segment is the characteristic indicator of myocardial ischemia myocardial ischemia leads into infarction that is cell death and the overall activity of your cardiac rhythm is going to get changed the electrical impulse will be indicator for change in this rhythm or the activity of any particular cell in the heart so understanding of this electrical impulse conveys us the pathological changes occurring into our heart so we can interpret these pathological changes by uh, using ecg as the tool for overall cardiac activity so it is one of the important aspect of our clinical practices thank you thank you very much